I have both the parents in my office, Your Honor, and then I also have the uh, paternal great grandmother to the children. And I'll put the screen where uh, you can see them if you want to move around okay. here. Cause okay. number thank you. Last time we had an adversary participation hearing. Uh, the emergency orders were extended till today from two to three thirty. The parents were to hair strand by noon on two seventeen twenty three. The parents were to Zoom two times between now and between then and today, um, set up and supervised by CPS. Uh, the participation case is also to be set for today, too. Did uh, Ms. Cochran Green, did the parents do the hair strand test? Yes, Your Honor. They submitted on Thursday. Um, we only have one UA back on the mother and the remaining tests are not back yet. Okay. Does that shed a different light on things for anybody? No. What about Ms. Cummings or Ms. Bennett or Ms. Potts? My understanding, no, Your Honor. Yeah, I mean, my understanding is mom's test was negative. Uh, my client swears that his test is also going to be negative. Somebody in your room has a hat on, Ms. Bennett. We're in court. I apologize, Your Honor. Okay, so go on, Ms. Cochran Green. You Your Honor, I would like to invoke the rule. Okay, what that means is the rule's been invoked. Everybody's been sworn in. That means that uh, y'all as witnesses cannot discuss this case with anybody uh, other than the attorneys. You can't discuss it amongst yourself. You can't text. You can't watch it on YouTube. You just have to be totally independent until you are uh, released from the rule. So that means that the witnesses are going to go back. I'm going to put them back into the waiting room. And then when you're called as a witness, uh, even when you're excused, somebody else hasn't testified yet, you can't talk to that person either. Ms. Ms. Cochran Green, you may begin. Please state your name. Courtney Rainey. And how are you employed? I'm an officer with the city of Burnett. And how long have you been there? Um, a little over four years. And do you, are you familiar with either um, Bradley Sheffield or Kaylee Sheffield? Yes, ma'am. How are you familiar with them? I am a school resource officer within the school district. And so um, I know them from uh, their daughter being at school. And then I also know them from being on patrol, responding to calls. Okay. And have you uh, <clears throat> responded to more than one call? regarding this family? Um, while being on patrol, I, I've only responded to one call, but within the school, I've dealt with them multiple times. Okay. And what time period did you deal with them at school? Um, so uh, this year, I'm at the elementary school with last year, it would have been all patrol. And then I knew year before. So uh, three years now. Okay. And what were the uh, nature of the incidents that you responded to at the school and also on patrol? So at the school, it was mainly um, our, it was mainly our office staff was <clears throat> in a way fearful of Bradley. So if they knew he was going to come up to school, they'd always want me to be present. Um, he was belligerent with office staff multiple times um, at RJ this year. The only time I've dealt with them was when uh, Kaylee was arrested on her warrants. And then the following day, Bradley called and was just belligerent, yelling on the phone to our principal. She heard a disturbance, possible disturbance on the phone. So she came and got me and I had um, deputies from the sheriff's office respond out to the house. And what was that call? With respect um, to the house. Uh, Bradley was upset because Kaylee had been arrested the day before. She was at the school. Um, I knew she was up there. I had officers <clears throat> waiting for her down the street. They got her on her warrants. He was upset about that. He was upset about a meeting that she had uh, previously attended at the school. And then he decided just to start yelling at our principal. And then uh, while she's on the phone with him, she said that the phone would almost go silent. And then it would come back on and she could hear what sounded like a disturbance. The phone went silent. Connection, Your Honor. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you got a lot of background noise. but oh, I can hear I'm sorry. Um, 
anyway, I checked if she's going to go into third party conversations that she wasn't a party to. That's hearsay. Sustain. All right, Officer Rainey, can you tell us about the incident you responded to or the incident involving Mr. Um, Sheffield and the child in 2022? So we um, got a call that someone had found a child up on um, Highway 29. Uh, we responded out there. <clears throat> I was the first officer there. I got Addie. I put her in the back of my car. I was trying to talk to her, trying to figure out who she was. Um, somebody came up and said that she thought she recognized him. Um, we were able to identify Bradley as her father. And then officers went to the house. I stayed with Addie where we were at. The officers went to the house, said, bring her up to the house. I took her to the house. Um, when I went to get her out of my car to hand her over to Bradley, I said, you're going to go with your dad. And she held on to me and she didn't want to go. And then she finally went and he got her from me, started yelling at her. I remember vividly he told her that she was just a white trash baby um, because she was dirty and had no shoes on. Um, he was just on the phone with Kaylee. F I mean, it's just the F word repeatedly. Um, from in my experience, Addie did not want to go. Um, but, you know, I told her she had to go with her dad. Um, she went and then we went on our way. Okay. And did were there any charges um, against Bradley that resulted from that incident? I do believe that they filed um, the uh, child endangerment charge. I passed the witness. Ms. Bennett. <clears throat> what was what was the date what was the date that this happened what's that um the incident with um Addie where you found her and brought her back to the house do you know what date that was no no ma'am I know it was last year um <laughs> was it in maybe March of last year I couldn't tell you the exact date. I don't have it in front of me. Okay. So, um, okay. So you have no, you don't even know the month that this happened in. I was on patrol. I, so I'm not at work today. I called in with a migraine, so I don't have any of my stuff in front of me. So I'm sorry, but I don't have, I don't have all that in front of me right now. <laughs> All right, I pass the witness judge. Anybody else? Your Honor, I have a couple it's of questions. Good. Officer Rainey, when that situation occurred, did you contact Child Protective Services? Uh, yes, ma'am. And did an investigator come out to the home to investigate the same thing that you guys were? Um, I believe so, yes. Okay, and... Do you recall having communications with the investigator? Um, I don't recall. I've talked to investigators plenty of times um, when it comes to this family. So I don't, I don't have my notes or anything in front of me. To your knowledge, have the children ever been removed from their parents previously? I don't know. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Anybody else? No, Your Honor. Uh, anything else, Ms. Cochran Green of Officer Rain? No, Your Honor. Uh, Officer Randy, I had one question. Where did the parents live in relation to where uh, Addie was located on Highway 29? So the parents lived, so there's Highway 29, and then there's off of it, and then there's two roads, and they would live on the second road. I don't know, it was maybe like three or four houses down off of that road. So it was quite a distance for somebody that age to make it that far, and nobody knows she was gone. We, so, um, I stayed with her for quite a while and then we finally identified her and officers went to the house and they knocked on the door repeatedly, repeatedly, and finally had to tell Bradley, we're not here to take you to jail because he had warrants at the time. Um, so then I took her to the house. Objection. <laughs> Why? Why? What's your objection? Um, it's hearsay, your honor. She's saying what the other officer's interaction with my client was, and she wasn't there. She just said she was at a different location with the child waiting and the officer, the other officers went to the house. Okay. If I'm wrong, so, please correct me, but that was my understanding. You weren't, you weren't there at the house. 
Miss Rain. Officer I was Rain. not. I was no. I was there um, in the parking lot there on the side of twenty nine. Okay. Uh, sustain, Miss Miss Bennett. Um, did you talk to the parents after that about the incident? No, I just I had Addie in my car, and when I went to get her out, I said, "Hey, your your daddy's here. You're gonna go with your dad." And then when I went to get her out of the car, she grabbed onto me and I said, no, you have to go with your dad. And then she finally went with him. Okay. And the father didn't say, hey, you know, we were asleep or didn't give any explanation to you as to what. Not to me. Right. No, ma'am. Now, I know where 29 is. Give me a little bit better. So I'm kind of figured this out. I'll give you some. Um, do you know where the sign shop is? Probably a mile and a half, maybe from 281. Okay. My, you know, give or take a little bit west. I know where Sonic is. I know where the CPS office is. It's still past all that. Um, I know where that Hoover Valley Road comes in. Okay, so it's going to be before that. Okay. And the, pa the parents live on the north side of 29 or the south side of 29? They lived on the north okay. side. All I can think of is the sign shop and then um, the motorcycle museum. Motorcycle museum's on the south side of 29. Sign shop's on the north side. How was the child dressed? Um, I remember she was dirty, but I mean, you know, not dressed out of the ordinary for. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Ms. Bennett? I do. Um, just to clarify, cause I'm confused now. Um, in your incident report, you wrote, you were dispatched um, where they had found a little girl, but you're saying they didn't find her on Skyline. They found her on Highway 29. So Skyline runs off of 29. Right. And so the sign shop is right there. There's a parking lot and that's where I pulled in and somebody was there with her. Um, and it also said she had her dog with her. There was a dog. Mm -hmm. And it was her dog or, or the family? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and did your understanding that they thought that she had possibly followed the dog out the doggy door? That's, uh, I guess what was told. Um, I was with her the whole time. Okay. Officer Ramey, if your report says that this incident occurred on March 2nd, 2022, would that be correct? Yes, ma'am, if that's what it says. And you also stated that the child was dirty and she was fearful. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And she, so she was dirty, fearful, and you turned her over to her father. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Did you take or make any attempts to find anybody else that the child could go with since she was fearful and you had concerns? So so, uh, to my understanding, mom was on her way to the house um, during all of this. And so, when I'm told by supervisors, it's what you have to do, you know, she went with her dad. And you didn't stay to make sure that the mo mother came home to be there? Um, I stayed down the road for a little while until I had to go for another call and the mom had not shown up. Did you have eyes on the child while you were down the road? No, ma'am. Yeah, I'll pass the witness. Anybody else? Officer oh, Randy, what time was this, if you can recall? I don't remember. Early, I mean, it would have been the earlier part of the day. Okay, so it was light outside. It was light outside, yes, ma'am. Okay. Did the dog go home to, to, to see if it was their dog? The dog go home too? The dog was in my car, so it went home with okay. her. Okay, so it probably was her dog then. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Officer you may be excused. Hope you feel better. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I can, I can remove. Let me remove him. Thank you, sir. Ms. Cochran Green, he's your witness. You may begin, please. Okay. Could you please state your name? Sergeant Michael Darty with the Burnett Police Department. And um, how long have you been with the sheriff's office? Or you're with, uh, with Burnett Police with the Department? Department? 
Yes, okay. ma'am. Sorry about that. Uh, a little um, over two and a half years. And are you familiar with uh, Bradley Sheffield and Kaylee Sheffield? I am. How are you familiar with them? Um, I have had at least two dealings with them in the, the last two and a half years that I've been there. Uh, this last incident was, I believe, last month oh. where we had to take a call where Kaylee was intoxicated at a, uh, a child's party there in town. And apparently the children made an outcry That's from correct. the father. Uh, hearsay. Hold on. What? Objection. Hearsay. Okay. Your Honor, he can, he can testify as to what the call was. That's not proving the matter of to be asserted. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were responding. Uh, okay. You, it's, it's overruled. Go on. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so the last incident. Uh, there was an outcry by the children at a party where Kaylee was highly intoxicated. Um, and during that incident, she failed to identify to myself and the officers on scene. Um, but prior to us realizing that she had warrants for arrest or that she had failed ID, her husband had picked her up and taken her home. Okay. Prior so to that, sorry, go ahead. And so at that, you, you responded to that call, correct? Yes. Along with other officers? Yes. And were you able to interact with Miss Sheffield? Yes. Were you able to um, observe her with the children? Yes. And based on your knowledge and experience, uh, do you believe she was intoxicated? Yes, highly intoxicated. And um, were you able to interview other witnesses there at the party? We did. Um, some of the uh, some of the other witnesses were also. <laughs> Honor if he's going to talk about what any other witnesses stated. Object to hearsay. Officer Darren, don't talk about what everybody else, what anybody else is going to say, unless it was the parent. So, Miss Cochran Green, you can change your question, please. Sure. Um, so, once you responded, were you um, able to confirm whether or not Miss Sheffield left the party with the children, and yes. how she left? Yes, she left with Bradley and the children went with her. And were you able to interview Bradley Sheffield at the party? No, um, I was uh, going to communicate that to the officers who were on scene with me, but before I could get outside to do so, they were not clear that I wanted to talk to him. And he loaded her up into the vehicle, was my understanding, and left as quickly as he could. Okay. And you mentioned um, early on that Ms. Sheffield had given you a different name? Yes. And what was the name she provided to you? Uh, it, it was Kaylee, but it was with a different spelling. She spelled it differently and she gave a different date of birth. Okay. And were you able to run a report on that name and date of birth? Yes, we completed a report. We filed a warrant and a warrant was issued for her arrest. Okay. And what was the charge? It was failed to identify fugitive because she had, I believe, uh, at least three warrants and one or two of which were felonies at the time. Okay. And was she arrested? Yes. My understanding is that she was. And since that date, have you had any other um, interactions with either Mr. Sheffield or Mrs. Sheffield? Since that day, I had not. But prior to that incident, last March, um, I responded to, uh, I believe, their home, the home they were living at on or in, uh, just outside of the city limits, but really close to the city limits on a uh, disturbance between Bradley and Kaylee where Bradley barricaded himself, in, barricaded himself inside the house with the children and refused to come out. Um, during that incident it was discovered that the two had been in a disturbance of, of physical disturbance because Bradley was wanting sexual relations with his wife and she did not want to have sexual relations with him at that time at which time he uh, assaulted her. She fled the house. Um, unfortunately, the two girls were left inside with Bradley. Objection. The officers were... Sustain. And um, moving on from there, did that incident also involve any other relatives of Mr. Sheffield's? The, I believe his parents were both on scene at the time. Okay. And... Um, 
were any charges filed as a result of that incident? I do not know um, if that was a county incident. We assisted county on that particular incident. Um, I'm not sure if county filed assault charges against Bradley at the time or not. Okay. And did you have any interactions with Mr. and Mrs. Sheffield at that time? I did not. Okay. And what was your role? I take that back. I did. I believe I did uh, speak to Bradley over the phone while I was there waiting for county to arrive on scene in an effort to get him to come out of the house or an effort to get him to release the children at least um, so that we knew they would be safe. Your Honor, Officer Daughtery, whenever you went out to the home for the birthday party incident that you described, were there any other adults there at the home aside from the mother? Yes. Was there anybody else intoxicated? Yes. The uh, the other uh, parties did, had been drinking that night. Okay. And what kind of follow-up did you do since the father left with the mom and the children? Um, at that point in time, they had gone out into county. Um, we went, I, we did a CPS notification on that incident because there was no outcry of any specific assaults that were taking place uh, immediately at that point in time. Like I said, I was aware of the previous incident last March. And I know that uh, Mr. Sheffield has uh, past history within the department for being uh, extremely violent and has been arrested for other violent incidents. So, officer, so, so after they left the home and they went outside, out of the city limits into the county, you didn't contact any other law enforcement agency to go and check on the family or anything? At that point in time, I didn't believe that there was a, the, an exigency or an immediate need or um, any concern that, that there was going to be any violence at that point in time. Okay. And you said that you did do a, I guess, a notification to CPS? Correct. Do you know if they ever went out and investigated? Whenever yes, you they were, yes, oh. they were out there the following day uh, with the uh, escort from uh, the county, Burnett County. Just make sure my date's correct. So you contacted them on January 21st, 2023. And then on January 22nd, 2023, the county did an escort to the home with CPS. I believe so. Don't quote me on it. Uh, from what I recall, unfortunately, I left my paperwork in my uh, vehicle and I'm currently at home. Uh, what I recall, it was the fall that morning. We made the uh, notification of the incident to CPS. And I want to say later in that it was either later in that day that CPS went out with uh, county escort or the following day. I'm not exactly sure of the exact time frame. And at the time, do you know if they made any plans to remove the children? I do not. I was not informed. Pass witness. Thank you, Ms. Cummins. Ms. Bennett, any questions? No, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Potts. No, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Cochran Green, anything else? Okay. No, Your Honor. Uh, Officer Daugherty, when you went out the time about the uh, at the home with the, the parents fighting, dad was upset, was alcohol involved at that time? I don't recall whether it was or was not, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Officer Daugherty, you may be excused. Thank you very much. Thank Have you, Honor. Day. Okay, thank you. Are you there, Mr. Edwards? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. We had a little frozen incident, so you're good now. Thank you. Um, you were sworn for earlier, correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Ms. Cochran Green, you may begin. Hello, could you please state your name? Name is Deputy Mark Edwards. And you're employed with the uh, Sheriff's Department? Yes, that is correct. The Burdick County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been there? Uh, since September of 2021. And are you familiar with Bradley Sheffield or Kaylee Sheffield? Yes, ma'am, I am. And how are you familiar with them? Um, I've responded to a call back in March of 22 to their residence. Okay, and what was that call about? It was a uh, physical disturbance call that we responded to on that night, late that night. 
Okay, and you and other agencies also responded, like the Burnett Police Department. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Um, were you able to interview Mr. Sheffield or talk with Mr. Sheffield or Ms. Sheffield? I personally did not interview Ms. Sheffield. Um, one of our other deputies did at another location. Um, as far as Mr. Sheffield, I spoke to him briefly through the locked front door. He was refusing to come outside and talk to me. Okay, and were the children inside with him? Yes, ma'am. And what did he say? Why did he refuse to come out? Uh, he stated to me that he didn't want to come out because we always put him in jail. Okay, and have you, uh, were you aware of any other incidents where he was in jail? No, ma'am. How long were you out there with the Sheriff's Department? Uh, I don't recall. Let's see. And did this go on all night for an hour, a couple hours? Looks like we were out there from about 11 o'clock that night of the 15th till almost 1.30 the next morning. Okay, and you stated that you had responded to a physical or domestic disturbance? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Who were the uh, parties who were involved? Uh, the alleged suspect for this call was Bradley Sheffield, the... Two alleged victims for this call were going to be his wife, Kaylee Sheffield, and his mother, Shelly Oliver. Okay. And did, um, was Mr. Sheffield uh, arrested that evening? No, ma'am. Um, was he arrested at a later point? Yes, ma'am, he was. And, and what were the charges? Uh, there was one Class A misdemeanor for assault causes bodily injury family member and a second degree felony offense that was aggravated assault with a deadly weapon family member. Okay, and what was the weapon that was involved? Uh, it was a shovel. And which was, who was the victim of that particular assault? His mother was the victim of that one. Okay, and the children were present when all of this was going on? Yes, ma'am. And when you arrived, you said that you were able to interview Ms. Sheffield. Had she already left? The that is correct. Yes, ma'am. And at the, during that incident or after that incident, did you report it to CPS? Yes, ma'am, I did. I passed the witness. Officer Edwards, I guess after you guys infused that incident, where were the children? Um, we had a negotiator come out who was able to make contact with Mr. Sheffield via phone. Um, and after some talking, that he agreed to release the children outside of the home to grandparents, to I believe his grandparents is who it, who it was. So the the kids left with the grandparents. Yes. And did you you said you had contacted CPS? Did you contact them for immediate assistance? Yes, I did. And did they show up during the time frame that you were out there negotiating? No, we, after the kids had been, sorry, after the children had been released from the residence, um, after we had cleared the scene is when I contacted CPS to make the report. And did you ever do any follow-ups with CPS to see what they were doing regarding the family and the children? No, ma'am, I did not. Did you have any concerns that either the parents were going to go and get the children and cause them harm? No, ma'am. And, and the incident, just to make sure I'm clear on, this happened in March 2022, correct? That is correct. So almost a year ago. Correct, yes, ma'am. And have you haven't had any other encounters with the family since then? I personally have not. And you are still employed with the Burnett County Sheriff's Department? Yes, ma'am. What shift do you work? I work, the, excuse me, I work the night shift. I may have misspoken. I'm sorry, I may have misspoken a second ago. The only other interaction I've had with the family is CPS went to go do an interview. Um, I don't recall the exact date. It was a couple, couple weeks ago, and we responded to the grandparents' house where he was staying with the children while, while CPS did their interview. 
And did you say the entire time CPS was doing their interview? Yes, ma'am. And when CPS was done with their interview, did they attempt to take the children to remove them from the home? No, ma'am. Did the parents, I guess, interact appropriately? Were there any concerns? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the mother was not on scene. Uh, the father showed up after we had been on scene for, for a period of time. Um, he wasn't, he wasn't exactly happy that we were there, but other than that, everything seemed to go fairly smoothly. Did you have to arrest him? No, ma'am. Did he see, seem reasonably upset as any parent would be if CPS were involved? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, um, is it your understanding that when the alleged assault took place that the kids were asleep in their room? I I don't know. Did you observe Shelly to be intoxicated at the time? No, ma'am. Not, not that I recall. Do you have any knowledge or is she saying that he threatened to hit her with a shovel or that he actually hit her with a shovel? She had, she had stated that he had swung the shovel at her multiple times, stating that he was going to kill her. So he didn't actually make contact? Not to my knowledge. Ms. Okay. Coffin Green, anybody have anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Deputy Edwards, do you know what the status of those charges are? I do not. I believe he was he was arrested on the warrants, but as far as that, I, I don't know what the status of those cases are. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay, anybody have anything else? Okay, Deputy Edwards, you can be excused. Thank you very much. Be careful. Thank, thank you. you. Ms. Coffin Green, you may begin. Hello, could you please state your name? My name is Erin Cheney. And uh, are you employed with the Burnett County Sheriff's Office? Yes, ma'am. In what capacity? I'm a patrol sergeant. And are you familiar with um, Bradley Sheffield and Kaylee Sheffield? Yes, ma'am. How are you familiar with them? Um, I have responded to their former residence. On, um, and I recently had um, assisted CPS um, dealing with Mr. Sheffield. Okay. And was that on February the 10th, Friday night? Yes, yes ma'am, it was. And did you provide an escort to the department in order to um, help the department remove the children? Um, I was not one of the deputies that went to the residence. Um, I did meet with the two CPS employees at the Burnett County Sheriff's Office. Okay. And on the prior incident that you're referring to, are you referring to the incident that occurred in uh, March of 2022? I believe that's the date, yes, ma'am. Okay. And have you had an opportunity to review um, the records or incident reports on this family? Um, I would never, on February 10th, the Friday night that I assisted CPS, I was able to go over um, some address history pertaining to Mr. Sheffield and Mrs. Sheffield. Okay. And um, were you responding to the officers who were on duty that evening? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to kind of monitor the situation that was going on? Yes, ma'am. How would you describe the situation with how um, the children were removed from the parents? On February 10th, correct? Yes. Um, my understanding is that they were removed from a residence outside of my jurisdiction. So I, I don't know exactly how that went. All that I know is um, Burnett County's involvement was to assist in the removal, which they were not located at the house off of County Road 200. Okay. And how long did uh, the officers in Burnett County attempt to remove the children at the Burnett residence? How long? I did don't have happen? an. I don't have an exact time. Um, it was throughout their time on scene, approximately twenty minutes, I would say. But I was not there, so I, I that that could be incorrect. Okay. And regarding the twenty-two incident, did did you say you responded to that one? Uh, yes, ma'am. I did along with Deputy Edwards? Uh, yes, ma'am, he was there. And other officers? Plenty, yes, ma'am. And at any point in time, were you able to interview Sergeant, I mean, um, were you able to interview either Kaylee Sheffield or Bradley Sheffield? No, ma'am. Were you able to interview any collaterals? 
uh, I did not interview any persons on scene. I was uh, maintaining scene security. Okay. And how many officers uh, responded to that? Um, it was both, there were several agencies um, to include Burnett County Sheriff's Office and uh, Burnett Police Department. I know for certain um, between the two agencies, I would say approximately five or six. Um, I do know that our captain was also called to scene um, later in the call. Okay. And is that fairly typical for a, a domestic disturbance call? No, not necessarily. No, ma'am. I passed the witness. Uh, okay. When you were reviewing the incidents and reports and stuff on Mr. Sheffield, did you note that he has no criminal convictions at this time? Um, I, yes, ma'am, I, I do. I actually ran the, his criminal history and his uh, rap sheet as well. And that was, that was documented on our end. Okay. Pass the witness. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Ms. Potts. Yes, I have a question. Um, officer, can you tell me why so many officers responded to the scene on March 22nd? Um, there were children inside of the residence. And um, in terms of keeping um, innocent parties safe, we take every precaution necessary. And then I believe you mentioned a supervisor was called or the sheriff or somebody higher up. Why was that? Um, that was a... a a decision that my patrol sergeant at that time had made to get in contact with our captain. Um, their communication between Sergeant Swain and Captain Clark, that was between them at that time. Again, I was just maintaining scene security. Um, is the supervisor ordinarily called on these kind of cases? It, it, if it, I believe the way that that one was portrayed um, was potentially a barricaded subject with children inside of the residence. Um, so it would be common practice to go ahead and notify a supervisor. You were doing scene security. I think you called it something like that. Yes. Uh, yes. Was there a reason to believe the suspect was barricaded inside with the children? Uh, he would, he was not releasing the children. Um, at first he did not want the children to leave the residence. Um, so there, there was reason to believe that he was keeping them inside. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Anybody else have any uh, questions of Officer Ch Deputy Cheney? I have a follow up. Okay, Ms. Bennett. Lots of questions. Um, I, does a per is a person required to come outside and talk to law enforcement if there's not a warrant or some type of documents? Um, when that the reason that we responded to that call was uh, for a physical disturbance. So where somebody is listed as the suspect, we would like to speak with them to get everybody's um, stories and an understanding of what exactly is happening. Right. But it's not against the law to choose to not tell your side of the story and just remain silent. Right. Correct. And does a parent not have the right to keep their children inside, especially if they're inside asleep, instead of waking them up at <laughs> one in the morning to talk to somebody? They have that right. Ask the witness. Anybody else have any questions? Your Honor, I do have a follow-up. Were the children were the children at their house? Were they at the house of the parents on March 22nd, or were they in someone else's house? They were at the residence that they all resided in drive at that time. It was their home. Okay. Thank you. Officer Ch uh, Deputy Chang, did you see the children that night? Yes, I did. I, I watched them walk out of the residence um, and into the care of, I believe it was Mr. Sheffield's grand grandmother and grandfather. How did the kid, how were the kids acting at that time? They appeared fine, um, that may be confused. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, Deputy Cheney, you may be excused. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Cochran Green. I'm gonna call Giles Reimer and it may, I'm not certain about the pronunciation of his name. Hello, could you please state your name? Giles Reamer. 
And how are you related to Kaylee Sheffield? She's my sister. And you're the uncle of her children, correct? Yes. Um, were you subpoenaed to be here today? Yes. And with respect to either your sister or Mr. Sheffield, do you have any concerns about their ability to care for the children? Yes. And what are your concerns? Um, their lifestyle, their, their, just, their habits. I just don't see the best interest. I mean, from some examples, um, we'd go to a family event and Braley would want to come home and spend the night with my kids. So we'd bring her with the arrangements that we'd meet back up with Kaylee or Brad the next morning. Um, and then a day or two goes by and we can't reach them. And so we have them the full two, three days. Um, and then we finally reach them. They have no explanations, no if, ands, or buts, or reason why they wouldn't answer or come get the kids. Um, other Can than you that, tell us what time frame this is. Is this a recent thing or? It was a birthday party. It's been a couple times. The most recent was probably, it might have been last year, exactly about a year from now. Um, it was when my buddies had a, a kid. He had a birthday party, so they wanted to ride with us over there, and they were going to stay the night with us. I think at that time, I don't know if Kaylee was working, if she had a job or not, but that was her excuse. She had to work. Okay. Do you but have concerns? Do you have concerns about uh, Bradley and Kaylee's relationship? I do. And what are those concerns? Um, there's just a lot more of the, so I, I don't, I'm not too close with either one of them. Uh, but when I do see Kaylee, it's normally on a, on a holiday and she'll come over and she'll be distraught or she'll be um, just sad feeling. And she'd start talking and giving us stories and talking to the, just the domestic, the physical violence that Brad gets when he gets angry. I checked if he's gonna say what the kids supposedly said. He's not talking about the kids, he's talking about what the mother said. Oh, I, he, I thought he said Braley. I'm sorry. No, he said Haley, he said the mother. Okay. No, overrule. So Kaylee would come over. I mean, she'd be at the point in tears, but she'd talk about how, you know, Brad has pulled her out of the house by her hair, um, just throwing everything around their house. She sent me a video just showing this is what happens when Brad can't find a cigarette and just different things like that. Um, and then as far as their relationship, it's just, the stories I hear, I've never seen it physically. I've seen Brad get angry, but I've never physically like I've seen him do anything. It's just what I hear from my sister. And do you believe that your sister and Bradley would benefit from services provided by the department? I do 100%. Um, do you think Bradley would uh, participate in any, in any services without being ordered to? I do not think he would. And why is that? Um, he has a mentality that he does no wrong. He can do no wrong. That he he is above everybody around him. Um, that just may be the way he holds himself. But it's just, I think he truly believes he doesn't need it. I pass the witness. Uh, Ms. Cummings, any questions? Yes, Your Honor. Go on. Ms. Reamer, when your sister has talked to you, do you believe the things that she tells you? I do. Have you ever called CPS? I have not. But you believe your sister? I do. So did you feel like the, your niece, um, the children were in danger? If it was in my household, yes. I wouldn't, I, we don't subject our kids to that sorry, type of violence. I'm sorry. Do you feel like the children are in danger in their parents' home? Yes. But you did not call CPS? No. Did you call law enforcement? No. Did you take any steps to protect these children? I tried to stay in my lane.
was the last time that you saw the children and the mother? Christmas. Of 2022? Yes. Did you offer any assistance to mom to help her get out of the situation that you believe she's in? Uh, yes, last year. What, off what assistance did you offer? We offered to take the kids in and enroll them to school and let them stay with us for a while while she got her affairs in order. So he's offered to take the kids? Yep. But you never called CPS? I did not. Section, Your Honor, know. asked and answered. I just wanted to make sure that I heard correctly. Ms. Dine. I'll pass the witness. Ms. Bennett, any questions? Thank you. Um, so going back to when you talked about um, Braley spending the night with your kids, normally when Braley spends the night with your kids, isn't it usually for the weekend, not just one night? No. Okay. So if Kaylee says that it's usually for the weekend, then she's lying? She's only spent the night over here a handful of times. Has she ever spent the weekend or has it always only been one night? Normally it's one night. So she's never spent the weekend? She has. Okay, so she has spent the weekend? Unplanned, yes. Okay, I passed the witness judge. Mr. Reamer, I'm Susan Potts and I represent the children. And so it is my job to do what the children wish to do and what is in their best interest. So I'm gonna ask you some questions. You indicated you had some concerns about the parents' um, lifestyle. Yes. Is that, okay. Can you tell me what you mean by that specifically? So if I had to elaborate on that, it's more or less, I mean, they may have a different perspective. I can't speak for them, um, but when I view them, it's, there's always something different, whether it's doing something different for an employment um, or not having a job or there's been. A lot of it's the distress. I see when I see my sister, I don't see her very often. It's just how she responds to their relationship. She's very. Ten years ago when I met Brad, maybe a little longer, um, Kaylee was real smart and just just real talkative real everything and then as times progress she's lost herself with it um because initially when it was just Braley, they were i felt they were great parents and as soon as adeline came along i could just see a shift in things um and i don't i'd have to really sit and think about it well let me but, let me ask you this some of the the issues that have been occurring here generally involve um, occurring during birthdays or holidays. Does does either parent other drink excessively or at all? They both drink. Do they drink a lot or a little? Do you know? I don't count how much they drink. Um, I can definitely tell at the beginning of the party they're acting one way and at the end of the party they're acting a different way. They're under the influence of whether it's alcohol or something else. I don't know but they are definitely the, hold themselves different. Are the children at those events? Yes. Okay. Did Kaylee ever tell you whether or not the children were present during the events of family violence that she described to you? Yes. What did she tell you? Um, Oh, you're making me think harder than I can think. So I guess the last incident was when I think we talked about it when I think Brad's mom was in town where the girls had to be taken outside or put in a different room real loud. And then Braley would walk in or walk up. And why are you hitting mommy? And what else? She said something along. It's hard to recollect. It's a lot of these things is with my mind. I don't 
It's, it's so hard to hear. I don't, I don't hold on to it. I try to look past that and it's. That's okay. Thank you very much. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Anybody else have any more questions, Mr. Reamer? I do. I think Ms. Cummings does too. Ms. Cummings. Just off, Your Honor. So, Mr. Reamer, are your main concerns with the family, the parents, because they don't live the same lifestyle that you're choosing for yourself? No. I mean, I'm not going to say, I've never seen them do drugs, but the way they talk about it and the way they hold themselves when we are together, there's more to it than what I've care to ask about. You said you had concerns because they switched their jobs a lot or they might not they have a job. They don't have a job. They're living here. They're living there. And it's to me, it's stability. I don't, I just don't see stability. Um, the address that your sister lives at right now, they lived there for about a year. Isn't that correct? What address is that? At Brad's grandma's house. Yes. Yeah, they got a fifth wheel there, a trailer. Right, and they've lived in. Uh -huh. oh, Your Honor, would you instruct him to actually answer my questions instead of talk over me? Uh, Ms. Raymer, just wait till she finishes her question, please. Go on, Ms. Bennett. Okay, they have lived at that address a year. Is that not right? I believe... It's coming up on a year. Okay. And prior to that, the place that they lived, they had lived at for about five years. Is that right? Give or take. Okay. But living at one house for five years and another place for a year, that's not stable and that's flip-flopping all over in your opinion? That's hard to answer. How long have you lived in the place that you lived? Three years. Okay. So is that stable? Yeah. Okay. So at the family event that you're talking about where um, you saw Bradley and Kaylee drinking, did you drink at that family event? I did. So does that make you a bad parent also? No. When you're talking about being around them when his when Bradley's mother was here, you're talking about March of 2022 of last year. Is that right? Correct. That's the story I heard from my sister. Okay, so that's the incident that you're referring to. Which incident are you referring to? The when she was drug out of the house by her hair. That was that. And where they're living now. And there was other incidents you'd have to speak with my mother that we talked about in the past. I don't have exact dates on with additional domestic violence. When you're referring to the incident when his mom was here, that's the incident in March of 2022. That's the incident, yes, that she discussed with me. Okay. I have to that Okay, thank you. Ms. Potts? No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Cochran Green, anybody else have any more questions? I don't have further questions at this no. moment. Mr. Reamer, did, did either parent ever tell you about when uh, Adeline was found alone on Highway 29? Yeah, I've heard about that. Did, that, okay. did one of the parents tell you about it? Initially heard it from my mom, and then I talked to Kaylee about it. What did she tell you about it, Kaylee? It's crawled out the doggy door under Brad's watch. Where was your sister? I didn't ask. I don't recall asking her that. Okay. And she say anything else about that? What I recall is that somebody had picked her up. I don't know if it was an undercover cop or somebody had seen her walking near 29, Highway 29. Okay. And there was something brought up on that. And that's really all I asked on it. I didn't ask too much detail. I just said that's sad to hear. Did uh, your sister tell you anything about when she was drug out of the house by her hair? No, nope, just that nanny was there. 
which is Brad Grimmel. Mm -hmm. And that's. And when was, when was this, in, excuse me, when was this incident? If I recall, it was a few months ago. It was right after they moved out of the other house over to there once they, once everything happened in March. Have you ever seen any acts of physical acts or physical violence between the parents or any uh, abusive, in your opinion, abusive words, fighting, anything like other that? Than, other than voices being raised, I've never seen anything physical in person. But again, I see them maybe over the past 10 years, I've maybe seen them a total of 20 times. Um, excuse me, are the, are the children placed with y'all, you, sir? No. No, okay. And where do you, what it, it, general area do you live in? Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else have any questions, Mr. Reamer? Ms. Bennett? I just want to clarify again so that it's not confusing. When the judge asked you about that incident, you said a few months ago, but that that was the time when Bradley's mom was here. I just wanted to be very clear. The last time that Bradley's mom was here was March of 2022. Is that right? Correct. Okay. So when you say a few months ago, you're referring to March of 2022. No, a separate incident. But the incident where you claim that Kaylee's hair was pulled or something and Bradley's mom was there. That's March of Bradley's mom was not there. Nanny was there. Bradley's grandma. Grandmother. Okay. So you're saying that Kaylee told you about a different incident? Yes. Okay. And what did you do about that? As much as I could do, try to comfort her. So you comforted her. Did you call law enforcement? Again, I felt that was not my place to do so. We tried to talk her out. She's talked about getting a divorce, talked about moving out. She's moved out to my parents' house or my dad's house a couple times trying to get away, but she's always going back to that. We've offered ways other than law enforcement. Okay. And you didn't call CPS? I didn't call CPS. I have called in a well check once. I don't recall the date on it, um, but I've never called CPS. Okay. And so did you not feel that the kids were in danger, that it was mostly a thing between Kaylee and Bradley? I felt the kids were in danger as well. I mean, when we see Adeline at our family events eating candy at 11 o'clock at night, not eating a full meal, it's just concerning. So you're a bad parent if you let your kids eat candy at 11 at night at a family gathering? In my opinion, yes. Okay. All right. Pass the witness, Judge. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Reamer, you may be excused. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next witness, Ms. Cochran-Green. I'm your honor. Um, I'd like to call Sierra Pelly. And are you the investigator that was assigned to this case? Yes, ma'am. Uh, when did the department receive a referral? Um, we received the referral um, on January 24th. Okay. And what were the allegations? There were allegations for concerns of domestic violence, drug use, and physical abuse. Okay. And prior to this referral, were, did either parent have any history with CPS? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and what history? There was a case in 2022 for when Adeline was out of the home. And then there was a CPS case uh, before that when um, there was concerns of Adeline um, licking a Percocet and that had to be okay. seen in the hospital. And what were the outcomes or determinations in those investigations? Both of those were ruled out um, in those investigation separately. Okay. And what once you received this case, were you able to make contact with the parents? Yes, ma'am. Well, I made contact with Mr. Sheffield. Okay. And were you able to um, conduct an interview? With Mr. Sheffield? Yes, ma'am. What about Ms. Sheffield? No, ma'am. She was incarcerated at the time. 
Okay. And do you know what she was in jail for? Yes, she was in jail for uh, warrants um, dealing with like theft. And um, I would have to refer back to her criminal history or the others. But there were warrants. Okay. Now you mentioned in the allegations for the referral domestic violence, were there any other allegations? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are allegations for drug use and physical abuse. Okay. And when you interviewed Mr. Sheffield, did you ask him about the allegations? Yes, ma'am. And what was his response? He denied all of it. Okay. Did you ask him to do a drug test? Yes, ma'am. And what was his response? Um, initially, he said that he would and that I would be able to drug test him right then. And then he, um, when I pulled out the oral drug test, he denied wanting to complete an oral drug test and said that he wanted to go to the facility. And I let him know that that would be okay, that I would need him to drug test that following morning um, at the facility. And um, that next morning, I received a phone call from him stating that his attorney had advised him not to. Okay. And did he provide you with that attorney's name? Yes, ma'am. And did you reach out to that attorney? I did. And I was told that that attorney was not representing him. Okay. Did you reach out to Mr. Sheffield again? Yes, ma'am. And um, did you ask him why he didn't submit to a drug test after learning, after you learned that he was not represented by an attorney? He let me know that he wanted to speak with his attorney, um, that same attorney, um, and was going to have a face-to-face -face meeting with him and would let me know. Um, and then I continued to follow up with Mr. Sheffield about getting drug tests. Okay. And in cases or investigations where there's allegations of drug use, um, do you typically request a drug test? Yes, ma'am. Um, what about Ms. Sheffield? Um, she was in jail, but were you able to interview her at any point? Yes, ma'am. I went and interviewed her the following day. Okay. And did you address the allegations with her? Yes, ma'am. And what was her response? She denied them um, other than reporting that there was one domestic violence incident. And what time period was that incident that she told you about? She did not elaborate. Okay. Were you able to check um, criminal history for both Mr. and Mrs. Sheffield? Yes, ma'am. And what came back on their history? There was a list of um, different charges for Mr. Sheffield um, regarding thefts. Um, there was a few aggravated assaults um, and one being on a peace officer. Um, Ms. Sheffield had um, theft on hers as well. Okay. And did Mr. Sheffield have a charge for endangerment? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to determine what that endangerment, um, what were the underlying allegations for that endangerment? Yes, ma'am. Um, I requested the police reports and that charge is from the um, time that Adeline was out of the home on Highway 29. Okay. And the department did an investigation as you testified before and ruled that out. Do you have an explanation for why the department ruled that out when uh, the police department pursued charges? So um, I wasn't the investigator on that case, but whenever I looked over that case and the history, um, the department ruled it out in the, like in the way of neglectful supervision um, for that because um, how they worded it was that it was an isolated in incident and that afterwards they were able to block the doggy door. Okay. So they showed that they were able to block the doggy door after. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to assess uh, the Sheffield's home? I did not go into the RV. Okay. Where, did you ask for consent to go into the home? I did not, Mr. Sheffield had let me know that he was just gonna interview with me and then speak with his attorney the next day. Okay, and assessing the home for safety is part of, it's just statutory duty of yours, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. And, 
at any point during this investigation, you weren't able to access the home? No, um, Braley had let me know that she sometimes stays in the RV and the uh, grandparents' home. And I was able to speak with her in the grandparents' home. Okay, so you interviewed or you were able to observe both children, correct? I was able to observe both children, but only able to speak with one. Okay, and, and that was Braley? Yes, ma'am. And did she make any outcries of abuse or neglect? Not during my interview, no, ma'am. Okay, were you able to interview um, other collaterals? At the initial day, I'm sorry. I spoke with many family members. Okay, so the department requested that the parents be ordered to participate in services, correct? Yes, ma'am. What, um, why did you specifically request that they be ordered to do services? To be able to have the family, you know, do the drug tests and get drug um, resources if those were necessary and to be able to get with them for domestic violence allegations. Okay, and so you were able to, through your investigation, substantiate the allegations of domestic violence? There are multiple family and law enforcement um, stories. Okay, and did you believe at that time that the children were at risk of abuse or neglect? Yes, ma'am. And what were the services at that point in time that you were asking the court to order the Sheffields to do? Um, follow all you know, recommendations with the department, um, follow, go and work with family-based safety services, um, with drug testing, any drug and alcohol assessments, um, counseling, and, you know, any things that the, like the department sees necessary, any safety plans, any psychologicals. Okay. And so you filed for this on February the 7th. You filed for court-ordered services. Um, and then later, the department filed for emergency removal of the children. What led you to um, request removal of the children? More family members um, and um, professional like law enforcement and school personnel that had concerns for ongoing behavior with the Sheffields and concerns of the children. Okay. Do you, um, can you articulate specifically what the immediate danger to the children is at the time you were filing? The um, concerns for the erratic behavior, the domestic violence um, that were being, you know, concerns of the ongoing domestic violence while the children were in the home and the concerns of the drug use and them being primary caregivers of the children. Okay, and when you say drug use, um, were you able to determine whether the parents were using drugs? I was not, they were not willing to do a drug test. Okay, but did other family members and other witnesses report any alleged yes. drug use. Yes. Today, um, we're asking that the court appoint the department as temporary managing conservator. Do you believe that there's a continuing danger that these parents present to their children? Yes, ma'am. And what is that continuing danger? Their um, behaviors with each other and um, their lack of, you know, willingness to work with the department um, and the the possible ongoing use of drug use. Okay. And prior to uh, removing the children, um, did you reach out to family members for uh, potential placement of the children? Yes, ma'am. And who were the family members that the department was considering? Giles Reamer. What about the grandparents? either grandparent um, the paternal grand like the Bradley's mother is was in Florida um and so initially during that initial time we like to place with someone that's in the state of Texas Miss Kimberly Reamer was actually not answering our phone calls um on the evening that we were we had removed um that we were actually looking for the children 
Um, she was not answering our phone calls and later found that the children and Miss Sheffield were with Miss uh, Miss Kimberly Bremer. Okay, so before we get to that part, so on the 10th, the department was able to get an order removing the children approved by the court, correct? Yes, ma'am. And did you call law, law enforcement to escort you out to the property where Mr. and Mrs. Sheffield lived? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to um, obtain custody of the children at that point in time? No, ma'am. Can you please tell the court what happened, what transpired while you tried to remove the children? Um, we re uh, arrived at the residence and knocked on the door. Um, and that was when the uh, paternal grandparents, so the great grandparents of the children, um, Anne and David Oliver answered the door. I had law enforcement with me and I requested that I speak with the Sheffields and I was told that they weren't there. Um, I was given multiple different stories as to where they were. Um, and then I walked away from the um, house to call my supervisor and let them know that the children were not there and that the parents were not there. Um, during that time, I another coworker of mine, investigator, was over there speaking with um, Miss Ann, uh, Miss Ann Oliver, and um, you know informed her like there was a court order that you know was requesting the custody of the children um, with the department, and um, she had let them know that she would go to jail because she was not going to say where they were. And um, law enforcement was up there, and David Oliver had said underneath his breath that the children were with the granddaughter. Objection, Your Honor. They're not a party, and that's hearsay. All these so and so said. So, let's, thank you. Um, let's focus on Mr. Sheffield, Bradley Sheffield. Um, at any point during the evening, did you talk to Mr. Sheffield? Yes, ma'am. And uh, did you advise him of the court order? Yes. Um, did you ask him to bring the children to you? Yes. And did he? No, ma'am. And what was his explanation for why he would not? He did not have any gas. Okay. But you were at the residence, correct? Earlier in the evening, yes. Okay. You were willing to, did you express to him that you were willing to come out to the home to retrieve the children? Yes. And what was his response? I was actually told that I would not be allowed to um, when law enforcement denied allowing themselves to go out there. Okay. And so are you saying that it got to the point where law enforcement wouldn't go back out there? Yes, ma'am. And was law enforcement able to determine where the children were? Not at the time. Were you calling around to different relatives, um, family members, and also Mr. and Mrs. Sheffield in order to obtain the children's location? Yes, ma'am. And were you able to? Um, eventually, but I had called uh, Ms. Sheffield and her phone um, was disconnected. And I called multiple family members of Ms. Sheffield and Mr. Sheffield, um, you know, having them you know, try to figure out as well, help the department. Um, and they were getting the same kind of answers as I was. Um, I was talking on the phone with Mr. Sheffield and he denied um, wanting to give me any information as to where the children were. Okay. And you said that Ms. Sheffield's phone was disconnected? Yes. Um, ultimately, the children were located um, just out San, outside San Antonio, correct? Yes, ma'am. They were staying with Ms. Sheffield and her mother, Kimberly Reimer? Yes, ma'am. And had you made attempts to um, contact Mrs. Reimer, the grandmother? Yes, ma'am. Me and multiple other people attempted to reach her that evening. Okay. And ultimately what happened with respect to being able to get custody of the children? Um, we 
ended up having to have um, other child protective service workers in that area go to the residents and um, remove the children from the residents with law enforcement. Okay. So from the time that you went out the first time to the Sheffield's residence, approximately what time in the evening was it? Um, I, we got the signed orders at or around 420 um, something, approximately 420 something. Um, I requested law enforcement um, around 440-ish um, and law enforcement didn't, um, you know, arrived to me for assistance until um, approximately like 6.30ish. Um, we were able to go out to the location um, and we were around seven, uh, between 6.40, seven o'clock. Um, and then we went back to the Burnett Sheriff's Office after Mr. David Oliver requested that we left the residence um, since the family wasn't there. So we went back to the Burnett um, Sheriff's Office and continued uh, looking for the children and talking with people. Okay, and and ultimately what time was the children um, picked up by CPS? I believe it was, I don't know. I do know it was later in the evening. I don't know the specific time at this time. Was it after midnight, before midnight? I believe it was after midnight. Okay. And with respect to the great grandparents, the Tollivers, um, did they assist you in trying to obtain the children? No, ma'am. And you already testified that Miss Reamer, the maternal grandmother, did not, correct? With yeah. respect to reasonable efforts in order to prevent a removal of the children, can you explain what reasonable efforts the department made or unreasonable efforts? the department made in order to uh, eliminate the need for this removal? We, you know, worked with the family and, you know, gave them opportunities to get with their attorneys uh, multiple times. Um, I spoke with multiple family members um, to be able to get good, you know, whatever information I could from family that see and speak with them. Um, because not only is that that doesn't always have to be bad things uh, for the family. That could be good things uh, that could you know, look at ruling out an allegation. Um, I was able to write the court order of um, participation of services in hopes that the family would work services with the department to eliminate the need for removal. Um, and then at that time, we were getting more information that corroborated with the allegations that heightened the um, need for removal of the children. Okay. And in your conversations with Mr. Sheffield, um, have you ever observed concerning behavior? In person, I've only, you know, he presented himself well when I first met him. Um, the following morning, he called me and was very upset um, and then, you know, demanded that he speak with my supervisor. I gave him my supervisor's number um, and then there was multiple different times where he would be okay on the phone, speaking with me, willing to do a drug test. And then there would be times where he would deny um, and get upset that the department would have to stay involved. Okay, and what would he do when he was upset? Um, his behavior changed um, by you know, escalating his voice, not allowing me to speak. Okay. What about um, on February the 13th? Uh, did Mr. Sheffield and Ms. Sheffield come to the CPS office? Yes. And what was the purpose of their visit to the CPS office? Ms. Sheffield had um, called, I had, she had called the office and I had called her back and she had let me know that she had the caregiver resource forms. And I had let her know that um, she can come and bring them up. I was here at the office, but I can take the caregiver resource forms. And that was the reason of the, you know, for her to bring those to me so that I could start looking at them. Um, and the front desk had came and let me know that Mr. Sheffield was at the office and that he didn't have any papers um, saying that he needed to speak with me. Um, I staffed with my supervisor and um, she let me know that, you know, we have attorneys appointed at us, but there was, you know, if they have the paperwork just to drop the paperwork off. And so I was on the phone and I had another 
coworker of mine go up there to, you know, let them know that I was on the phone on a meeting and that you know, they needed to, you know, leave the paperwork here, but they were represented by attorneys and um, that I wasn't able to meet. And um, that worker came back to let me know that she had let them know um, to leave that I wasn't able to meet. And then I was directed by my supervisor to go ahead and call law enforcement. And why did you call law enforcement? Due to his um, behavior the following or the previous few days um, and the difficulty with the removal okay. for the safety and of. Now at the office on the 13th, was he refusing to leave? Yes, ma'am. And was he um, arrested at the CPS office? Yes, ma'am. Where are the children placed now? Are they in a foster home? Yes, ma'am. And are there any potential relatives on the caregiver resource form um, that are either appropriate or willing to serve as placement for the children? Um, there, Mr. Uh, Ms. Sheffield had put Brandy and Virginia, um, and we would need to look into them, but the others at this time are not. Okay, so Randy and Virginia are Kaylee's father and stepfather? Uh, stepmother. Yeah. Ste I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Stepmother. So maternal grandparents. Yes, we haven't been able to look into them. Okay, but are they, are they willing to serve as a placement? I do not know. Okay. With respect to the Tollivers, the great grandparents, um, Ms. Sheffield had uh, put on the child care give a resource form that she wanted them to be considered, correct? Yes, ma'am. And why does the department believe that they're not appropriate at this time? The, um, you know, from the very beginning of whenever I first met them, um, the, you know, when I first came there and I introduced who I was, um, Miss Ann Oliver, you know, initially said, why are you taking my baby? Objection, hearsay, sustain. Hey, can you provide what your concerns are without actually stating any statements made by Ms. Tolliver or Mr. Tolliver? Um, enabling the family, the parents, and not you know, seeing that the children are being subjected to the concerns um, that Mr. Sheffield and Ms. Sheffield have going on. Okay. And so a lot of you were able to review the incident reports, correct? Yes, ma'am. And does it concern you that some of these incidents have happened on the property where the Sheffields and the Tollivers reside? Yes, ma'am. Um, with respect to the maternal grandmother, Miss Reamer, where the children were when the, when the department was able to remove the children on Friday night, do you believe that she would be appropriate at this point in time? Not at this time. And why is that? Because she, you know, had the children and Ms. Shuffles in her home and was not answering the department's phone calls after speaking with me prior in the day. Um, so she had, and I had left multiple voicemails requesting that she speak with me. And so, you know, her not working with the department at the time when we needed her to. Okay. Now you heard Mr. Giles Reamer's testimony about he didn't call CPS. Um, does that concern you? No, ma'am. And why not? So, um, you know, at times, you know, the department will put it back on the family to work with the families. We do what's called a family team meeting um, sometimes, and that's where we put, um, you know, a lot of the stuff back onto the support to work with the family to offer them family support. Um, to, you know, if they can work with each other to get resources or communicate with each other for their, their concerns. And do you believe at this point in time that this family as a whole can rally around these parents in order to give the parents the resources they need to get the help that they need? Not at this time. And why is that? Multiple family members have, you know, expressed their concerns with um, their with Mr. Sheffield's behavior towards them. 
Okay. I passed the witness, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Cummings. Okay, well, we've gone over, so I'm going to have to recess. And we'll need to remember that Ms. Cummings, remember that Ms. Pilly is up next with you. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Cochran Green, I'm going to extend the emergency orders. The parents have been Zooming two times between now and then. They can, let me see. Your Honor. Parents Zoom two times per week. Your Honor, I, I want you to talk to the dad. I supervise two visits and he's been inappropriate with some things he's saying about hiring attorneys and fighting everybody and Get it, throwing up all his money at them. He's asking questions about the foster home, the foster parents. What, um, yes, the location, the location of the foster home. Yeah, so I, I sent, in writing, I sent them, do not say these things. And the very first question out of his mouth on Sunday's visit was, where are you at? Are these Zoom visits, Miss Singleton? They are, yeah. and and. The kids do want to see them, so I'm not saying I don't want to do one. The mother is extremely appropriate. She's doing excellent. The dad is the one I'm concerned about, so either I don't want him to attend or, um, what do you, you know. Ms. Um, Bennett. I, Judge, I'm sorry. Go, Ms. Bennett. Okay, thank you. Um, I have talked to my client about that, um, and he understands. He didn't know how, he said, he didn't know how to answer the girls when they were asking questions. Um, I talked to him about how to answer them. Um, I told him, you know, to follow Kim's uh, rules and stuff. He said he wasn't even thinking when one of the girls said, where are you? And he goes, where are you? You know, and then went, oh, crap, I was supposed to say that. And I don't know, he's going to make a very concerted effort to be appropriate. And I told him if he wasn't, then he wouldn't be getting visits. So I will do whatever is necessary. It wasn't okay. a question. The kids were children's bill of rights. That's going to be applicable to this case. And if there's any more violations, dad's visits will cease, like Ms. Bennett said. Oh, and anyway. Ms. Uh, uh, Singleton, you just, if, if there's something that's inappropriate, you know, just say, Mr. Sheffield, this visit's over for you. We'll see you in court. Okay, I will. And the mom can continue to visit, uh, but dad's not going to be able to be around if that continues. No questions about how they're doing. No questions about where they are. No whining. No, I've spent all this money on lawyers. You haven't. They're court appointed attorneys. Um, you know, blah, blah, blah. Nothing. You've asked how school. Um, what are y'all up to? You know, and then they can ask you. I mean, you know, you don't say. You don't talk smack about your lawyers, CPS, CASA. Ms. Potts, the court, nothing. You do not talk about this case, period. You don't no. say, oh, when y'all come home, we're going to Disney World. You know, none of that. You just lay low and don't stir the pot. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if so, then if that happens, Ms. Sheffield, you're going to have to go find somewhere that he's not around to be able to have a phone call with your kids. And that's not very fun. No, yes, ma'am. That is not going to happen. I will do anything necessary. Okay, well, and hopefully by then the drug test will be back. So we'll have that that information also. That'll help. Okay, well, the emergency orders are extended until 3-7-23 at 2.30. And I'll just put 2.30 to 5 o'clock. So y'all have that whole time. And uh, Children's Bill of Rights in place. If dad violates it, no more visits. Uh, y'all can, can uh, Zoom, parents Zoom two times per week per CASA and placement. Y'all can work that out, Miss Singleton. We, we have it. It's five o'clock on Wednesday and two o'clock on Sunday. Well, that's good. Okay, well, that's tomorrow. That's great. Okay. Well, good luck to everybody, and I'll see y'all via Zoom. Uh, I'll put it, Zoom's agreed, and I'll see y'all on 3-7. Uh, and Judge, is there no possibility of any in-person visits since it's already been a week or 11 days and they haven't seen them in person and it's going to be another probably week and a half or so on top of that judge from my perspective i don't feel like it's safe that's just my opinion for what it's worth yeah. i i want to continue supervising them by zoom the, the kids do want to see them and when the last call was over, they immediately just jumped up, got the friend, the other kids that went outside playing. They were fine with that. I don't want any more drama than that. 
I'm going to let them visit one time next week at the CPS office. Y'all can go supervise the visit. Um, and that's only if the Zoom visits between now and then go okay. Um, I'm, I, it's, I don't think he's, is he allowed at the CPS office? Is there, I think, no. did they have a trespass notice on dad? So I don't know if we can have you know. somewhere else. Or if someone can confirm that. I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know. But I certainly don't want him to get in any more trouble. Right. <laughs> I'll double check. I don't think it was a criminal trespass completed on him. He just wouldn't leave when he was asked to leave multiple times. But I can confirm and let the attorney. Well, speak. I'll say uh, at a place agreed by CPS, CP, since uh, dad wouldn't leave the CPS office and the police had to come, then CPS can pick where the next visit occurs. I mean, if if our it would be boring, but if our conference room is open at my office here in Burnett, I mean, they can use that. That wouldn't be fun. Well, it's going to have to be somewhere that could be observed too, Natalie. And I don't know if you gotcha. know, I don't know how that's going to work. I True. mean, you go to the Burnett Police Department. No, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Y'all just have to work it out. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Okay, so Zoom continue one time next week, and, and that can be for. Let's just say one hour. Uh, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Cummings, give your clients CPS visitation rules, et cetera. And I'll see y'all in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.